have seeing eyes, hearing ears, and an understanding heart that we can continually walk with God. Praise God. All of you watching at home, we bless God for your lives. We thank you. We've, we've been praying ceaselessly for all the saints in the house uh, that God would not only protect. You know, there, there, there were elements to the Passover that we mustn't forget. That when, when the angel of death was passing over Egypt, the Lord was passing over his people. And part of that Passover was an anointing to prosper. Part of that Passover, they said, go and borrow articles of silver and gold and plunder the Egyptians. And that's exactly what happened when the children of Israel left Egypt and they were walking out to the wilderness. They plundered the Egyptians and then God canceled all the debt by uh, killing all the Egyptians. Hallelujah to Jesus forever. Praise God. But please make sure that you are in the Word of God in this season. It's really, really important that your word level is strong, that your declaration is strong, that you're believing God for the future. The Bible says that He knows the plans He has for us, plans to prosper us, and plans not to harm us, plans to give us a future and a hope. And there's something about the one of the one of the big spirits that we in the body of Christ are fighting against is the spirit of hopelessness. May the Lord give you hope. There is a great hope. There is a great future. And we have to, you know, one of the things about um, walking this walk of faith, we have to declare it before we see it in the natural. But we have to see it before we declare it in the spiritual. So we see first, we allow the, the, the scripture to paint the picture on the inside of us. We allow that thing to formulate, to well up on the inside of us. What does a whole me look like? What does a prosperous me look like? What does an anointed me look like? What does a favored me look like? People have asked me in the past, you know, well, Pastor P, when you get out on the platform in front of thousands and thousands of people that you don't even know, that you're so bold. How can you have such boldness that God is going to do signs and wonders and miracles? How, how can you know that God is going to uh, back what you say with signs following? And I tell them, well, you see, before I ever stood on the platform, I stood on the platform. Before I ever did it, in the natural, I did it in the realm of the spirit. I allowed that hope to be formed so strong on the inside of me that then when I move out under the anointing of God, I know that God is with me. And you see, the Bible says, therefore, having such a great hope, we have great boldness in our speech. So when I go out there, I know that God is with me because he's already been with me before. I hope that makes sense. And this season, there's, there's, God, God is stirring us um, more and more in the supernatural. I'm feeling in my spirit that God is uh, challenging us to develop the supernatural element of our faith really strong because of what he's going to do in the weeks, months and years to come. There's something that God is going to do and he's preparing his people. He's preparing the body of Christ to get, to get ready to walk in that anointing, to literally carry the Ark of the Covenant, the Holy Spirit himself into the midst of this lost and dying generation. Um, we thank God, you know, on, on uh, Thursday was the funeral of our dear associate pastor, Pastor Toki. And as we stood over the gravesite with the family, I, I said to our dear sister Ronke, I said, you know, the, the, just think for a second of the number of people who have had funerals in this place and they've buried the only person that they love. They've buried the only one that they had any kind of relationship with. There was, no, there was no backup. There was no church family for them. There was no uh, sense of 
uh, community or and you know that feeling was just so strong on Thursday I want to thank everyone who participated and uh, by God's grace we'll get the, the footage out for those who'd like it etc uh, but there was there was such a strong sense of family this is a family event and as we were driving off after I'd said that to uh, Sister Ibi, I said, you know, I said to my wife, I said, look, look around you. Just all the, the hopelessness and the desolation that these gravestones represent. When we drove past a family, they couldn't have been, the, the children couldn't have been more than six or seven years old. And the woman, the wife was probably in her mid-30s, just attending the grave of what obviously was her husband on her own with her two small children. And uh, you talk about heartbreak, wow. There is a, a hurting generation out there. One of the things that we're praying for is that God will pour out a spirit of healing in the land. But people don't even know that there's a healer. People don't even know that there's a restorer. We are so blessed and so fortunate to know Jesus Christ, our King and our God. Praise God. We can't keep it to ourselves. We've got to let the people know that there's a God who loves them. Hallelujah to Jesus forever. Praise God. If you have your Bible with you, would you turn with me to the second book of Kings? That's 2 Kings, chapter 2, 2 Kings 2. And verse number 12, 2 Kings 2, verse 12. Um, and just while you're finding that in, in your Bibles at home, etc., etc., uh, I'm just so happy the football season is coming back. Please keep your um, Arsenal pictures coming in on WhatsApp to the Harvest Hotline. If you're wearing your Arsenal shirt to church, and if you're not, why not? Uh, we've had some over-representation of other clubs in North London which are too blasphemous to mention at the altar, and we need to level the score. Hallelujah to Jesus. Uh, 2 Kings 2 and verse number 12. Elisha saw it. This was Elijah going up to heaven. Elijah promised him, he said, if you see me going up to heaven, he said, you can have a double portion of my spirit. And Elisha saw it. And he cried out, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And he saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. He also took up the mantle of Elijah that fell upon him. And he returned and stood by the bank of the Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and struck the waters and he said these words this is where I want to be today where is the Lord the God of Elijah one of the things that God has been putting on my heart over this last couple of weeks is the desire thank you sweetheart the desire to how can I put it Provoke is, is a, to invoke, let's use the word invoke. The desire to invoke the presence and the dynamic action of the Lord God. There is something about calling upon the name of the Lord whereby we are standing in the authority that God has given us we are calling on his name and we are saying, where is the God of Elijah? Now, there's something that God needs to be able to effectively make contact with. We need to be a covenant people and we need to know that when we call upon the Lord like that, that he is going to answer. The Bible says, I sought the Lord, what, dot, 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 and he answered the word and is a conjunction there, and it means I sought the Lord and he answered. We need to seek God, not just for ourselves. We need to seek God for the supernatural power of God to be on our lives for this coming weeks, months, and years ahead. 
And it's not so. I thank God, you know, for the way that God has protected us through this whole thing. But this thing isn't for us. It's for the lost, it's for, the, it's for those whose hearts are hurting, those whose hearts are aching. There is a generation, think about it now, there is a generation of children that have been raised in a fear of sickness. Fear of viruses, fear of physical contact with others, fear of anyone outside their own immediate circle and I tell you my brother and sister that fear needs to break one of the things that I've been praying for is that this thing will will switch that there'll be a turn from what I from what they call social distancing to what I call social clustering and let me explain this well, your immune system is is kept fine-tuned by fighting the viruses and the bacteria and those kind of things around you, right? Now, when you are in a situation where your immune system isn't fighting as fit as it should be because there's no, like, there's very little uh, viruses and bacteria around, then there is a problem because your immune system can start to effectively stand down. And what we need to do is effectively at some stage or other, instead of social distancing, we're going to need what each other are carrying to be able to keep our immune system uh, fighting fit, so to speak. Now, I'm not an immunologist. I'm not a virologist. I'm not a medic, etc. I'm not a clinician. And that's why we're following the government guidelines right now. But that's my prayer that's going up to heaven that God will switch the thing around at some stage and that there'll be a need for social cluster, clustering apart from social distancing. Don't know when that will be. They will declare it, I'm sure. But that's one of the prayers that I'm praying for this time because we cannot be raised in fear. I said we cannot be raised in fear. I refuse to live my life in fear. God, the Bible says, has not given us a spirit of fear. Doesn't mean that we're stupid. Doesn't mean that we act the idiot and we go out and we just, you know, lick the road or, or whatever, uh, etc. We've got to be wise in this generation. There's a difference between walking in wisdom and walking in fear. And I refuse to walk in fear. And I declare every day that wisdom is my sister and understanding is my close intimate friend. Hallelujah to Jesus. But there's another dimension on this. You see, that's like just sort of basic, like six, nine months to come. There's another dimension of this where God wants us to call upon his name and say, where is the God of Elijah? Where is the God of Elijah? I want to see him, like I preached a couple of weeks ago. Oh, Lord, make a name for yourself in this generation. Where is the Lord God of, of, of Elijah? I was uh, being mocked on social media because I'm a believer in the supernatural power of God, not only to protect but to heal his people and restore them to divine health. I was being mocked. People were sending me pictures saying, oh yeah, this is every Pentecostal pastor hiding behind a tree until the scientists come up with a vaccine and then they can come out and they can say glory to God. Can you imagine? Where is the God of Elijah? You see, the God I know, he's the one who answers by fire. The God I know, he's the one, when I step out on a platform, there's 50,000 people out there and they need to see the dynamic power of God in operation just to keep their faith on fire. That's the God who's standing behind me. I know my God. I know his power. I've seen his power to heal and restore and revive in all sorts of nations in the earth. And I'm not afraid to declare his goodness. I'm not afraid to stand before kings and priests. And, and I've done it. I laid hands on the president of Ghana. God showed me there was something happening in his physical body. And his personal secretary came out and thanked me afterwards. He said he really felt the power of God and he wants you to come back tomorrow. And I said, I, I said to, to uh, the guys I was with, I said, does he say that to all the guys just to encourage them? He said, no. He said, that's the first time I've heard them say that. 
Praise God. So I know the power of my God to heal and to restore and to bring divine intervention. I know in whom I believe. And my prayer today is, where is the God of Elijah? I want to stir you into that supernatural dimension that causes you to be divinely dissatisfied until you see the power of God through your own life. Hallelujah to Jesus. Jeremiah chapter 2. I want us to carry on this because there's something God wants to give you. An in, I feel like an injection thing today. May God give you your injection in Jesus' mighty name. If you're st- sitting beside someone, just nudge your neighbor as long as you're not socially distancing from them. And uh, in fact, if Ibi, if you're watching, slap your neighbor because I know it'll be one of the kids. Hallelujah. And uh, just tell them, inoculate yourself for this season. Praise Jesus. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse number 5. Jeremiah is a real interesting guy. The more I've been in his book, uh, the more I'm, I'm realizing the, the spirit that he carried. Wow, what a, what a voice. You know, I don't know how, how, whether you know this, how long Jeremiah was prophesying to the nation of Israel that Babylon was coming. Babylon is coming, he said, and they're going to take over. They're going to drag us off into captivity. You can try and run down to Egypt, but he's going to catch you there, and he's going to catch Pharaoh. You can try and run off. He said, you've disobeyed the Lord your God. You've walked all after foreign gods. You've walked after immorality and idolatry and all kinds of stuff like this. And he said, but God is coming for you. And he's raising up his own servant, Nebuchadnezzar, to carry you off into captivity. And if you think that he gives one hoot for his house in Jerusalem, he's going to destroy that too. I mean, God was angry. And Jeremiah was at that kind of business in Israel, prophesying to Israel, Nebuchadnezzar's coming, Babylon is coming, Babylon is coming. You need to get your heart right. You need to get yourself right. You need to understand the war that we're involved in. He was preaching and prophesying that to Israel for 23 years. Wow. And they still didn't listen. They still refused to listen. And even still, some people, when they saw it come to pass, they couldn't believe it. May we not be that generation in the mighty name of Jesus. May we have seeing eyes, hearing ears, and an understanding heart that we can continually walk with God and be his children. Can somebody say amen? Praise God. I want you back in the house, guys. I want I want to stop. Stir your spirit for this time and for this season. What God wants to do, supernatural displays of his power and glory. Supernatural, prophetic. I love the prophetic realm because a prophecy is as miraculous as a physical healing. Praise Jesus. Prophecy is miraculous. I love the prophetic. May it come in Jesus' mighty name in greater measure. Right, if you haven't found Jeremiah chapter 2, verse number 5 now, just forget it. They'll put it on the board for you. Thus says the Lord, what injustice did your fathers find in me that they went far from me and walked after emptiness and became empty and they did not say, where is the Lord? I wish verse 5 had ended at that saying there, and they did not say, where is the Lord? Thus says the Lord, what injustice did your fathers find in me? That they went far from me and walked after emptiness and became empty, and they did not say, where is the Lord? There is a judgment, think about this. There is a judgment that came upon the children of Israel because they weren't saying, where is the Lord? I've seen it, you know, in in my generation, I've seen religious excuses and religious nonsense for the absence of God in people's lives. And you know, I want no part in it whatsoever. I want to be saying, where is the Lord? Where is the God? 
God of Israel? Where is the great God Jehovah who made his name great when he took the children of Israel out of Egypt and into the great and terrible wilderness, when he took them through into the promised land? I mean, you know, this God made the sun stand still while Joshua fought the battle. Hallelujah to Jesus. I don't know anyone who's made the sun stand still since those days. Maybe something will need to happen one day. I don't know. Maybe, you know, someone will be preaching, the lights go out or whatever, and the sun needs to come back out. I honestly don't know. But I want to see those kind of signs and wonders. We've seen, we've seen miraculous things where, where God has held back the rain. I was thinking of Sunyani in northern Ghana there, where we were going to do a crusade, and there was, there was like all kinds of rain threatening to wash the thing out. And we just prayed on the rooftop, and we said, where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? Lord God, send your spirit to hold back the rain. We got to the crusade ground, and the thing was dry. Halfway through, and I, I wondered why. Halfway through while I was preaching, the, uh, there was like this shower just came down and it knocked out the sound system. There was 29,000 people there in the, sport, in the Jubilee Park in Sunyani. And the, the, the rain came and it knocked out the sound system. Do you know what I did? I finished preaching without a mic to 29,000 people and they all heard me. Hallelujah to Jesus. Supernatural signs and wonders. Where is the Lord? You see, sometimes God won't answer us the way we want, but he'll answer us some other dynamic dimension way. You know, personally, I don't care how he answers as long as the God who answers by fire answers. Praise God. Hallelujah to Jesus. There's a spirit of boldness that can come upon you. The Bible says, therefore, having such a great hope, we use great boldness in our speech. Amen. We are bold about these things. I tell people when, you know, when they're doing uh, like uh, gathering churches and, and all kinds of things together to do these crusades, these outreaches, these big things. I said, prepare, prepare for signs and wonders. Prepare for the miraculous. Believe God with me that it's not just going to be words. What could words do? Before I got saved in Ireland, I mean, there were plenty of people around who had words. There were plenty of religious people who had words. But what is words? When you need to see the dynamic power of the Spirit of God in action, when you need answers from heaven, what is words? I don't ever want us, my brother and sister, to walk after emptiness. I don't know whether you've been exposed to empty religion before, but it sucks. It stinks. I want to know where is the Lord. When I shut my eyes, I want to know what it's like to be in his presence. I'll never forget the time the Lord trained me about his presence. I'm sure I've shared the testimony so many times, but it was just it was just so so wonderful to me and I want particularly every young person watching me do not go after emptiness and become empty. Go after the God of Elijah. Go after the spirit of the living God. Go after signs and wonders and miracles. Go after knowing his spirit. Know what his voice is like. Know what the inner witness is like. Become sensitive in your spirit to the angelic and to the anointing of God. I remember back in 1986 when God was training me. I would come home from work. I worked part-time in a hospital in, in, in Galway in Ireland and I'd sit on the edge of my bed. I'd come home, I'd change, I'd sit on the edge of my bed and I'd be in the presence of God. And I'd say, Lord, I want, I want to know what your presence is like. And I would sit there and I would just sensitize my spirit. I would shut out everything and I would just sensitize my spirit. And I sat there day after day just calling on the Lord's presence, not even out loud. Even if it was loud, it wasn't, um, even if it was with my mouth, it wasn't very loud. And I would sit there and I would just call upon his name. And one day, it must have been, I don't know, at, at least five days. It may have been either, either, even seven or ten days 
after this kind of practice, what do they call it? The practice of the presence of God. Where I was just calling upon, I I was hungering. What does the Bible say? My soul thirsts for the Lord in a dry place. I wanted to know what his presence was like. Me, personally, not that I would just experience it corporately. Thank God for that corporate sense that we get in church and at all nights and conventions and and things like that. But I wanted to know his personal presence. And several days into this, one day, the Lord's presence started to come. Just from where I'm I'm actually pointing now, like a light, just, just... Stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And I knew then that I was in the presence of the Lord. And from that moment, my brother and sister, that's really where my encounter with God started. That's when I started to see things. I started to know more about the Lord personally. I'd, I'd heard his voice previously. I'd sensed his spirit previously, but this was one-on-one. I really want to encourage you today to develop a one-on-one relationship with the Lord. I want you to know God for yourself. I don't want you ever to walk after emptiness and become empty. I want you to hunger and thirst for God like I did. There's something about this generation That God needs a people. You know, the Bible says that the heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to the sons of men. There's something that has to leave the sons of men called prayer, called supplication, called desire, called hunger and thirst. That has to leave us to touch heaven so that heaven can answer. And Jesus said this, he said, blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. What more righteous a thing could there be than for you to desire to know the presence of God yourself personally? Hunger and thirst for it. Don't go after emptiness and become empty. Thus says the Lord, what injustice did your fathers find in me that they went far from me and walked after emptiness and became empty and they did not say, where is the Lord? Look at the same chapter, chapter 2, verse number 8. Again, God has this indictment this time against the priests. The priests did not say, Where is the Lord? So us not wanting to call upon the name of the Lord becomes an indictment against us. God wants to demonstrate himself in every generation. We need to know, Lord, make a name for yourself in our generation. I want the signs and wonders of all old to be in this house. I want the signs and wonders of old to be in your lives. I want it to be in your families. I want you to know what it's like for you to pray and for God to answer. Do not walk after emptiness and become empty. Open your mouth and say, where is the Lord? Where is the God of Elijah? Where is the God who answers by fire? Sometimes God has to stack the decks so that he can answer that way. I remember the stories of Elijah sitting on top of the mountain. The king is after him. The king wants to drag him into his presence and and beat him, whip him, jail him or kill him. And Elijah just sits upon, upon the mountain. And he says, well, he said, they sent 50 soldiers. Can you imagine sending 50 soldiers for one person? And Elijah's sitting, Elijah's sitting on top of the mountain. He says, look, if I'm a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you. Boom, 50 dead. Another 50 show up. And this happens a second time. And then the third time, the commander gets some sense. He says, look, you know, I know you're a man of God. Please don't kill me. This this king just wants to see you. We've got 100 corpses around here that have been burned by fire. Please don't add me to the list. And eventually, Elijah goes down into that thing. Where is the God of Elijah? Where is Elijah? the God of Elijah. Where is the jailbreaking angels from the book of Acts when they went against the governments 
of the time because the religious government was trying to shut them down from preaching the gospel of the resurrected Jesus Christ. They were jailed, they were whipped, they were flogged. Every time, I think that there were five, from memory, there were five jailbreaks. Five. Five jailbreaks in the book of Acts. And I don't mean that they were picking the locks and everything like that. I mean that they were there praising God, worshipping the Lord, and the Lord sent an angel and broke them out from jail. Hallelujah to Jesus. One day, I don't know, I mean it may be illegal one day, to pre it's certainly illegal to preach parts of the Bible in the UK on the streets of Britain. I know there was one guy got arrested in like Enfield or somewhere like that and they dropped the charges eventually. I don't know, but I know it's illegal in China. Hallelujah to Jesus, we are coming for China. We are coming for China. The body of Christ is coming for China. We need to know the God of Elijah before we set foot in that country. You want to know an occultic country? China. We're coming. We're going to drive out devils. We're going to cast out the devil. We're going to preach the living gospel. We're going to heal the sick. We're going to preach that the kingdoms of this earth, including communist China, have become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. Hallelujah to Jesus forever. Where is the God of Elijah? There are gods that need to come down in that setting and by God's grace will be a part of that if you're with me say amen I think some of you are hiding behind your couch this morning I'm preaching so strong but I want to stir you I want to stir you up to reach out for signs and wonders stir your spirit that inward mechanism that God has given you to say where is the God of Elijah where is the God who answers by fire I tell you what let's have a vote the God who answers by fire he is the Lord and he takes up the mountain lays out the sacrifice on the altar and boom fire comes down and licks up the sacrifice. Glory to God forever. May we have some of that Elijah spirit in the house in Jesus' mighty name. I feel like I'm preaching to a bunch of young people today. I feel it in my spirit. Do not settle for emptiness. If your testimony bag right now is empty, do not settle for emptiness. Hallelujah to Jesus. Stand to your feet right now. I want us to thank God for his word and I want us to pray into that whole dimension. There's a dimension of anointing that God is going to release in the coming weeks and months. I know it. There's a dimension in this house, particularly for the young people. I don't even know if, because I know they've got their own um, impact service, but praise Jesus. We've got to get this word out to the young, young people. I want to stir you up. In Jesus' mighty name, go for signs and wonders. Go for the supernatural. Go for healing. Go for word of knowledge. Go for the prophetic. Go for gifts of faith. Go for the miraculous. Go for it and do not stop until the God of Elijah answers. Dear sister of faith in the Lord, our sister Heidi Baker, prayed for 149 deaf people that God would heal them before she saw a single healing take place. Number 150 was healed. Harvard Medical School have been over to her outreach in Pemba, Mozambique, and they said that what she does is unexplainable because the number of profoundly deaf people that have been healed under her ministry. People have gone from Canada and from the United States People who were deaf have gone to Mozambique to get healed and have been healed. She said there's an open heaven over this thing. She said we can't explain it, but we know that the God who answers by fire has answered. May the God who answers by fire answer in your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Close your eyes now. I just want to pray for you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak out, Lord God. We speak just like Elisha did. Where is the God of Elijah? Where is the God of Elijah? We refuse emptiness. We refuse emptiness. We refuse to walk after emptiness and become empty. We want to be full 
of your spirit, Lord God. We want to be full of your anointing. We want to be those who carry a testimony of how God answered when we prayed, when we stepped in to the supernatural and how we walked by faith and not by sight. How we sought the Lord and how he answered. Father, answer, we pray, answer in Jesus' mighty name. Connect us to those divine situations. Your word says, Father, that you have prepared us for good works beforehand that we might walk in them. Father, I know that there's some people that the good works are awaiting them in China. The good works are awaiting them in Africa. The good works are awaiting them in Latin America. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for those good works. I thank you for those healings and for those miracles. I thank you for those prophetic words, Lord God, that will even sound impossible as they leave the lips of your people. But you who answer by fire will back them, Lord God, and we'll see them come to pass in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Thank God for his word today. I really hope you enjoyed today's message. If you'd love to get in contact with us, speak to anyone, please contact us for any of the points below. Thank you.